Ladies and gentlemen, this is Diablo 3. I'm your host, Kagekaze, and we're moving on to the Demon Hunter for patch 15. I've got pretty good news about the Demon Hunter, uh, even though it might not sound like it. Demon Hunter has not really changed that much as far as the skills go. And what I mean by that? Well, patch 15, uh, there were no official documented changes, and Diablo fans actually had no unofficial document documented changes. This is a very good thing. This means that the class feels just about right to Blizzard. Either that or they just haven't gotten to the Demon Hunter yet, but I'm going to try and lead towards the, the earlier one there, just because uh, I honestly think they're in a very good spot right now. As far as patch 14 goes, there were about three changes that I have here in front of me. And uh, aside from that, though, what has changed is skill order. So I'm going to go into the game, and we're going to go through the Demon Hunter from start to finish. I only have one piece of gear that I'm going to use for the Demon Hunter. The rest I will procure on site, much like uh, the uh, previous class, the Witch Doctor. And we'll take a look at the skills I get in what order. Alright, so the first skill we start with is, of course, Hungering Arrow. Generates three hatred. A magically imbued arrow that seeks out targets for 115% weapon damage and has a 35% chance to pierce through targets. A very nice single target ability, been buffed since its original incantation of, uh, or incantation, incarnation. Incantation, incarnation. Eh. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, right. It's okay. I feel silly when I say these things, just as you probably do hearing them. Anyway. It used to do uh, about 100%. Now it does more, 115, which is nice to see. Single target ability. Has the potential for hurting more than one target. As you can see, it's bouncing back and forth a few times. Uh, 35%, you know, one in three shots. It's, that's a nice shot chance. You're, you typically will only see it bounce once, but as you saw, there was one right there that bounced. That was probably like four or five times it bounced. That's incredibly lucky. Alright, from my stash, uh, I've only got this uh, quiver here, which is only available at level 5. I'll go ahead and using that because uh, quivers are not exactly the easiest thing to find. I found a few... Uh, recently, but uh, rare enough that I think I'll go ahead and hold on to it. And as you can see here, the only really thing it's going to give me is attack speed increase and some increased experience, which is kind of nice. Uh, all quivers, in case you hadn't noticed it the last time I talked about it, all quivers uh, have had the plus damage affixes removed to them. They were that was added in patch 13, and uh, then in 14 it was just removed. They probably felt that the plus damage on an offhand slot was a bit too much, making uh, single-handed weapon or and two-handed weapon gameplay um, a bit too powerful compared to dual wielding, I would imagine, because flat damage increases like that uh, are very nice. Uh, they are a significant buff, let's just put it that way. Alright, first skill I unlock is Impale, 25 Hatred, Impale a target for 250 weapon damage. Very nice single target ability. What can I do to help? I admire. Don't worry. Well, they're attacking the barricade. So 250 weapon damage. That's a significant chunk as you see here. I can uh, take out these zombies in about one hit with that. There we go. There are more of them in the ruins down the road. Just kind of go over the gear I get. Got some pants. Got some armor. I'm still a vagabond. We'll fix it over time. My hatred is too low. So the beautiful thing about the Demon Hunter, as I've talked about before, is I can sit here and just fire and not hit anything, and my resource generator will give me 
resource regardless. Now there was actually an interesting poster someone asked about this where the uh, barbarian, you know, why does the barbarian ha able why is he able to get fury from hitting inanimate objects while well, the monk is not? And on that same vein, why is the demon hunter able to gain resources from not hitting anything? Well, they uh, kind of announced it like this, you know, the barbarian, he loses his resource over time. So to help him out, he is able to get resources from destroying random objects. But the Barbarian's resource also doesn't get taken up that much. You, you can actually do quite a few things when you have full resources as a Barbarian. You look at the uh, Monk. The Monk does not... Oh, these guys are fast. The Monk does not lose his resource at all. When, when it comes to Spirit, the Monk will not lose it until he uses it. Uh, so basically, he's not allowed to gain resource from uh, hitting inanimate objects because of that. Because he can store it, whereas the Barbarian can't. Now, the Demon Hunter, on the other hand, his abilities are regenerating over time. I mean, he's automatically got regen. He actually spends his resource fairly quickly, if you think about it. I mean, two shots there, and I'm I'm down. And it doesn't come back that quickly on its own. So basically, because you are quickly losing it, they want you to be able to quickly get it back. So you combine the regen with the firing and able to get your resource back. Uh, the essential uh, gameplay for the Demon Hunter is quick to spend, quick to regen. They're very different playstyles, and you really cannot compare their resource generation abilities to the other. If you start trying to, then the problem comes into that uh, the resources aren't going to be different. If you want hatred to act just like fury, then then it's just fury. If you want to act like spirit, then it's just spirit. What's the point in having a different resource system? I think it works out. There are a couple times where I found myself uh, missing hatred, but uh, the hatred generators are fairly strong on their own now that you are not really required to use your spenders. Although it would certainly help if you do. You see here, I can kill a lot faster if I do. But it's by no means required, simply because look at Hungering Arrow. It's just there, if it bounces once, it's doing a lot of damage. All right, new skill is the primary. Uh, we'll go ahead and use it for a bit. I'll probably go back because this does less damage. Generate three hatred. This is entangling shot. Imbue an arrow with shadow energy that deals 75% weapon damage and entangles up to two enemies, slowing their movement by 60% for two seconds. Keep in mind this is up to two enemies, not up to two additional enemies. Sometimes Blizzard can get a little caught up on that uh, terminology there, and some of the spells don't exactly... Uh, show up in tooltips exactly the same. Sometimes you'll see that that wording, the wording is very important. So what will happen here, what's going to happen here is you're going to basically hit the first enemy and chain it to another enemy. Still waiting. And of course uh, what's actually going to happen here is you're going to sit here and watch me fire arrows pointlessly because I have to wait for 15 seconds. There we go. Okay. So downside to this ability. It only does 75% weapon damage. Not a good single target ability, especially compared to Hungering Arrow, which is 115, and it uh, has a chance to pierce hit multiple enemies. All right, upside to Entangling Shot is this. You are guaranteed to always be hitting a second target if one is nearby. It's 150 weapon damage if you hit two enemies. And as you can see, it's constantly hitting it. Not only that, but they're snared. So when two targets are in your field of view, the overall damage of this ability actually goes up. More than Hungering Arrow. And it also has a snare component. So technically, Entangling is a better ability, but it's only better uh, 
if you've got more than one enemy to hit. And uh, the other issue here is that Hungering Arrow actually has the potential to be greater than Entangling Shot, simply because that 35% chance to pierce means that you could theoretically hit every monster in your view at least once, and possibly more. Alright, so none of these are better. I'll go ahead and start an offhand since I'm still using my 3 DPS starter weapon. So the downside to the Demon Hunter and gear is that uh, I'm obviously restricted to only using hand crossbows, crossbows or bows. All the melee weapons that I see on the ground I cannot pick up. Well, that was interesting. I just managed to chain three enemies together by alternating which targets I use. That was kind of cool, actually. I really like the chain effect. And that it's always doing damage. Um, I was a little concerned when I first got this skill that the damage would only happen to the second target when the snare hit. Uh, but then I found out that the damage applies to both targets every hit, so the makes a very useful ability, actually. Kind of wish it would chain to another barrel or something, just to let me break more than one barrel. I suppose I'm just being picky and being greedy at that point, huh? I'm told he was a great warrior who was lost when Tristram fell to the demons. said she was a witch, but I never believed it. No, this is gonna... Let's get away from him. I don't really have any, uh... major abilities for snaring him other than this. Which is actually a good thing that I have this now. Slow you down. Hit you with my impale. There we go. Nice magic weapon that I can't use. Here's the key. I'm sorry about that. Graze my microphone. The microphone's rather uh, sensitive. Picks up a lot of little things that I don't expect it to. But hey, just means it's a quality microphone. I'm quite happy with my purchase. skill category and I get caltrops that would have been a little more useful in the uh, battle I just fought that's okay it's a new skill so I don't lose anything for using it cost eight discipline eight uh, discipline is of course the uh, smaller pool of the two notice I have 125 hatred three discipline hatred regenerates fairly quickly whereas discipline regenerates slowly and you don't have any discipline generators so you're pretty much re reserved to only waiting for that to come back uh, the only other way to compensate for that is to find gear with either plus to maximum discipline or with maximum, or sorry, with discipline regeneration on it. Other than that, uh, you pretty much just have to wait for it. 
Eight discipline lay a trap of caltrips on the ground that activates when an enemy approaches. Once sprung, the caltrips slow the movement of the enemy within 12 yards by 60%. The trap lasts for six seconds. Very nice. Uh, so I've already got a snare here in this entangling shot. As you can see, that's a 60% for two seconds. And this is a 60% for six seconds. So this is obviously the better snare. Caltrips being the better snare. And it's not hard to spam either. Now that I have a proper snare, and it lasts a little bit longer, what I think I might do is go ahead and go back to Hungering Arrow, and I can use my Caltrips more effectively. I'm still waiting. This is where the star fell. My quarry must be near. Just kind of put down traps as I go. And as you can see, I can just keep backing up and they'll keep slowing down. He's a little bit tougher, so I'll use my impale. helps to alternate abilities. Use up my uh, spenders. And alternate in some generators. These guys are quick. Let me get... Oh, they're knockback. I was going to say they were nightmarish, but... Uh, some of these uh, elite monsters move fast. There, that worked. I was able to damage the primary elite with the uh, mob I was just killing. Let me put down a couple traps. They're chasing me down, doing a pretty good amount of damage, too. Not quite prepared for this. Even with a 60% snare, look how quick he is. Not enough hatred. There we go. I noticed my health did go down quite a bit there. Didn't quite have to use a healing potion. Of course, I could have to made it a little easier. This will get easier if I find a weapon. I really need to find a decent weapon. I, holding on to the starter weapon, you've noticed I found a lot of weapons that are better, but I just cannot use. I mean, look, I have a 7.2, but I just cannot use it yet. Let's go ahead and activate that. That's uh, more armor. One more level and I can look at that quiver to see. Uh, what I want to test is I had heard that quivers could no longer be used with hand crossbows. <clears throat> hand crossbows are now only to be used with regular offhand items or shields. I can kind of understand this because honestly the best combination, uh, in my opinion, you know, others might have their own, but a one-handed, a single one-handed hand, one hand crossbow and a quiver with plus damage on it felt like the best combination to me simply because two-handed weapons fired a little too slow for me and uh, dual wielding while they fired really fast didn't pack a lot of punch having a one-handed crossbow and a quiver with plus damage on it gave me the best of both worlds Not enough hatred. 
as you can see you can just put down multiple traps I don't think there's a limit to how many caltrips I can have up as one at once. I think it's limited only by my resource. And I'll test that. I can do that. I love setting up grotesques to explode on another monster. Okay. Does it say? Uh, doesn't say. So one, two, three, four. I need more discipline. So there's four traps. Let me see if I can get a fifth one down before my uh, first one goes away. There it is. Okay. So it looks like there's no limit on traps. Uh, it's just that, of course, with eight discipline, you have to be able to uh, have the resource. And the traps will last for six seconds. So set six seconds is up. They'll start going away. I could say, you know, lead these guys back to them, but... Uh, they're pretty slow shambling zombies right now. Not a big deal. Okay, crude short bow. This is a gray, but I'm hoping it's more damage. It is. It's a gray, but I can use it. Uh, hold on to that for now. So, 4.0. Very minor increase, but... As you can see, it's a slightly slower firing. It should be doing a little bit more damage. We'll just take a look. 1 to 5 compared to 2 to 3. So, here, here's kind of the issue with that, obviously. Uh, the DPS is higher, but uh, the DPS factors in everything in a weapon. The attack speed, the critical strike chance, the critical bonus, all of that. So, this is doing 1 to 5, this is doing 2 to 3. So this means my short bow will actually has a lower minimum damage. This has a higher minimum damage, but this has a higher maximum damage by two. And as you can see on the uh, comparison chart, it says that with this, I... Uh, does this say minus 0.2? That's interesting. I think that might be a bug, because that's telling me I get a change of minus 0.2 attacks. That's just odd. I think that's if I unequip it. Uh, that was useless.
not enough hatred. There we have it, level 5, rapid fire. I think that'll be a little more useful to me. My name is okay, let's quickly look at rapid fire. Rapid fire is a 20 hatred initial cost with an additional 10 hatred wall channeling. So 10 hatred every second, roughly. Rapidly fire for 228% weapon damage is physical. Now, truth of the matter is impale does more damage. 250 to 228. The difference, a decent amount. Not quite 25%. But the uh, thing about rapid fire is that notice how it also costs less hatred. The initial cost is less, as is the follow-up cost. So for this 228, uh, you're getting a, pretty much a more efficient spell. So what we'll do here, so 228, and we'll put that over the 20 cost. You're basically looking at 11.4 weapon damage per hatred. 11.4. So 250 over 25. You're looking at about 10 damage per hatred cost. So Impale is great for that real quick, you need damage instantly now, so if you're looking to hit a target and do a large amount of damage in one shot, Impale is great. Uh, but Rapid Fire, the initial cost is much better. Of course, it doesn't ex entirely work that way. The initial cost is just to start it up, and then it's every... Uh, 10 seconds or so. Uh, but every 10 seconds then you're doing 228, or not every 10 seconds, every second you're doing 228 weapon damage for 10 hatred, which makes it far more efficient. You know, you think about that, that's 22, almost 23 weapon damage per second. So the initial cost, that'll set you back because the initial cost... I'm still waiting will not actually do that damage. So it's not like Impale where I'm going to spend that 20 Hatred and do damage right then and there. Rapid Fire doesn't work that way. That initial cost is the investment to get the ability channeling. So what that means is if you're going to use Rapid Fire, you want to use it in long bursts, like long shots. You know, you want, you want to make sure that you invest the time to use it. Because if you just use it for like a second then it's highly inefficient. Because then you're basically spending 30 hatred to do that 228. Which means you're spending more hatred than impale, and you're doing less damage. So yes, for the first hit, less. But now look at this. Look how long it fires. 10 seconds, or 10, or 10 hatred cost. I was able to kill that entire group just by sitting there and using it. And I used up all of my hatred Almost all of my hatred. Whereas with Impale, I would have used up all of my hatred in killing the first one or two. So the thing to keep in mind here, though, of course, is that runes are going to greatly affect these skills. Rapid Fire and Impale will be filling very unique roles with their runes down the line. For example, uh, Impale, the very first rune you get for it, causes a stun. Rapid Fire, down the road, will get a slowing component. So, th they'll have different reasons to use them. 
what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rain down vengeance from up on high. That's right. None shall pass. Hey, I'm here to rescue you. Let's go ahead and slow him down a bit. I'm not going to use rapid fire just yet. I'm going to wait for... That's it. See, I probably should have put the trap down before I started firing that second time. Just because that did end up costing me more hatred. Now, um, let me get that back. Let's do our quick test. All right. I heard wrong then. You can use quivers with a single hand crossbow. But because the quiver no longer gives you plus to damage as a raw value, this may not be really worth your time. Uh, what will make the decision for you to either dual wield or use a quiver compared to a shield because uh, you know th th that's it just it the, the difference between dual wielding and using an offhand like this quiver is going to be the procs that you get on those items because you can get shields with decent procs on them just like you can get quivers with decent procs on them the, the difference between shields and quivers is that quivers will more often than not have some kind of a fix on it that will be demon hunter specific such as hatred or discipline generation uh, and in this case you know it's a plus 10 attack speed I would rather just have it with this bow I mean you can look 4.13 compared to 5.45 take that off it's about 0.5 DPS difference so let's just get rid of that for now All right, well, since we're at kind of a natural stopping point here with Kane, I'm just going to grab the journals here and do kind of an experiment here. I did not uh, I did not believe I grabbed journal 1. I might have grabbed journal 1, but I did not grab journal 2. I want to see if journal 2 shows up or if it's journal 3. I believe it will just be 3. It is. So you can miss journal 2. Uh, you have to basically pick up Journal 2 around the time that Leia joins your party up until you rescue Kane. Because uh, the journal obviously changes once Kane is, rec uh, Kane is rescued. So uh, what I'm going to do here... Is I'm going to talk to this guy here. This guy tends to have the weapons 9.4. Really nice obviously expensive I'm gonna buy it though get my damage up and to celebrate we're gonna go ahead and kill uh, Hadrick's wife right there's nothing more exciting than wife killing we're gonna party like it's 9.99 see what kind of damage I can put out here 9 and 10 and 11s. Nice. Notice it still takes me more than one hit to kill him. And you got that nice arcane damage look on it. Enemies will glow purple. The Caltrip thing was really just for effect. And there you go. That is what makes uh, rapid fire 
So nice. You'll find his tomb in a cemetery in the Weeping Hollow. And if you see my fool apprentice out there, tell him to get back to town. All right then. This is part one of uh, what will probably end up being a five-part series, uh, unless there are any other problems. Who knows? Uh, which doctor was only three parts before I got to Leoric. Uh, but this is part one of the Demon Hunter, patch 15, Kagekaze, giving you in-depth analysis. And I want to thank you all for watching. Thumb up the content if you like it. Please leave questions, comments, and suggestions in the comment sections below.